everyone on the same page when it comes to peace. The more noisy your mind is, the more stressful your mind is, and more anxiety and depression and all kind of issues we feel. And the only way to deal with it is to come to your inner self. How do we find peace, especially during failures? Uh, we can see people have failures in their relationship, love, even in jobs, in business and so on. So we have made peace as a pursuit, yeah, which is then dependent on certain outcomes. Now those outcomes are not in your control. So it's a, it's a recipe for disaster, if you, if you see what I'm saying. In your case, you left your corporate world in order to seek for peace. How about normal people? Do they need to uh, detach <laughs> themselves from the materialistic world in order to find peace? Or they can do all these things and still find peace? Everybody does not need to leave their job or city life or anything and go to the Himalayas to attain the peace. In my case, I had to do that for a certain reason. I think it can be done parallelly. You don't have to leave what you're doing to seek for peace. Hi everyone, happy to see you all in Leaders Talk program. Today we have Sri Anish, who is the ex-senior corporate executive who has left the corporate world and moved to Himalaya to seek for peace. Now he resides in Himalayan state of Dharmasala. Let's meet him. Happy to meet you, Sri Anish. Thank you for having me on this show. Yeah, it's our pleasure too. Thank you. Sri Anish, if you see now, everyone seems to be obsessed with the word of peace. Even a 10-year-old kid is telling his parents that I have no peace at home. And needless to say about the elders. See, what is peace all about? And is everyone on the same page when it comes to peace? I think everybody's definition of peace is different. But at the same time, every living being on earth desire for peace, not just humans, but if you look at any living form, even a dog on the street, your cat, every sentient creature wants peace. Because I think peace is our inner nature. When the child is in the womb of the mother, it's a very peaceful state. But the moment child comes out, there's a whole world of noise all around. And it's just not the audio noise. It's a noise of thoughts, it's a noise of pressures, it's a noise of do's and don'ts, it's a noise of narrative. There are all kinds of noise. And I'm putting pressures, mental pressures also as noise. The moment the child is out, if you see what happens in the modern age, parents want to teach the child to say this poem or say that poem. That's a noise to the child. And every noise takes the peace away. And as I said, peace is our inner nature. We all desire peace. And what has happened in the current times, I think the noise levels have gone up. The distractions have gone up. Gone up. The more distracted you are, the more noisy your mind is. The more noisy your mind is, the more stressful your mind is, and more anxiety and depression and all kind of issues we feel. And the only way to deal with it is to come to your inner self, which is your inner nature of peace. I think that's why everybody desires peace, you know, even peace from the noise. <laughs> but uh, how do we find peace, especially during failures? Uh, we can see people have failures in their relationship, love, even in jobs, in business and so on. So we constantly having a lot of failures or setbacks in life. And how do we find peace during at that point of time? I think we need to change the understanding. We think peace is an outcome. I will do something and I will experience peace. I will have a great relationship and I will experience peace once I have a great relationship. I will have a great job, great salary, great business and then I will have a peace. So we have made peace as a pursuit. Yeah which is then dependent on certain outcomes. Now, those outcomes are not in your control. So it's a, it's a recipe for disaster, if you, if you see what I'm saying. Mm. My position is my experience is peace is your inner nature. You have to start from peace, which means peace is not a pursuit. It's your state of being. It's your state of mind. So 
can i be in a relationship where i know peace is my inner nature peace is something that is in my control and not controlled by the external person or situations it's easier said than done because you have to do some practices you have to develop some understanding to make sure that peace is in your control and you don't give the switch off this peace to your partner to your boss to your situation to your political leaders no the switch of this peace is always with you yeah we call it the spiritual process for an example if somebody meditates let's say half an hour every day for sure you will start to see that this person's resilience or agility in in all kinds of situations will be much more than a normal person normal person who is not meditating it will be very easy for him or her to break down to take on additional stress but somebody who is doing a certain spiritual or meditative practice this person will have a lot of agility it will be very difficult for people or situations around to disturb his peace it's a practice you know it it comes to you provided you really want to understand this process is the meditation is the only process um leaving a leading a content life and building meditative pra- practice is a great process i won't say an only process a great process but if i have to change my answer i would say actually the only process <laughs> okay <laughs> because i have gone through various processes uh, i've been a serial entrepreneur i've set up companies one of the company i uh, set up in about 2005 in india is an it company which has grown huge there are about 2000 people working now but i resigned not resigned i renounced the entire equity and stakeholding of that company and moved to himalayas to understand the peace because when i was too successful i was feeling that i'm very successful but i'm not peaceful i had great relationship but i think still i did not find the peace it would come and go it was not becoming a constant flow and for that i kind of started meditating yeah and then now i can say that probably it's the only process yeah if you want to have a stabilized inner state of peace if you want life to be just like this sometime peace sometime drop sometime peace sometime drop then there are a lot of ways then pursue anything that you like in life but if you want stability i would say meditation is the only process or spiritual way of life is the only process so as a spiritual leader and someone who has already found peace can i put a question that are you really uh, in peace all the time are you free of fear anxiety or stress or depression i use stress sometimes at will when i know for a certain task i need certain intensity i need to build certain pressure that's the time i will just pick up some stress to let's say deliver a job yeah uh, but most of the time my sthiti my position is quite peaceful it will be very difficult for an external person or a situation to disturb my peace yeah in last uh, about 12 13 years of deep practice i think it's quite stabilized but can i kind of give a guarantee that it is 100% stabilized uh, maybe i am 99% there <laughs> it is very difficult for me to say i am perfect you know how can you say that because perfection has no limit no yeah you keep evolving you keep evolving but more or less i'm quite stabilized in this state for normal person is peace is something uh, sustainable all the time i think that's where the catch is let's bring a little bit of science yeah there's something called vagus nerve in the human system and this nerve is very important to maintain the entire biology of the system in a certain order with this nerve there's a sympathetic and parasympathetic systems which work in the body now what is happening in the current world right now your partner speaks at high pitch and there's a lot of stress in your system your boss speaks something against you there's a lot of stress in the system and the stress at one level is good because it's a fight and flight response but now we are 80 90% of our day we are living in this zone 
that's causing a lot of disease in the body that's causing a lot of disease in the mind also that's the reason across the globe i'm seeing a rise in physical health issues and also mental health issues and then to experience peace we have to go to the pub and you know have a drink on a saturday night or a friday night or whatever night it can be stabilized most of the people experience it as an event but largely they are experiencing continuous stress in the system which is causing lot of disease in the system but i'm saying that peace can be stabilized it can be a a regular full time experience for you it is very much possible to do it it's needed also not just for your physical and mental well being if you operate your life from this peaceful state your impact in your job your impact in your relationships your impact in your family enhances multifold so i think this is becoming more of a need rather than do i want peace or should i avoid it i think it's really becoming an extremely important significant process in everybody's life to attain this peace there's a lot of work happening around the world by the way on this in your case you left your corporate world in order to seek for peace how about normal people do they need to uh, detach <laughs> themselves from the materialistic world in order to find peace or they can do all these things and still find peace so everybody does not need to leave their job or city life or anything and go to the himalayas to attain the peace in my case i had to do that for certain reason but having seen that the life of the himalayas having seen the life of the cities and entrepreneurship i think it can be done parallelly you don't have to leave what you're doing to seek for peace yeah you can just build your life in such a way you can just build your daily flow of life in such a way that peace starts to become ingrained into it so to answer your question yes it is very much possible to attain this peace with the job that you do with the business that you do with the family that you run with the country that you run and all of that you can have peace along with it you don't have to leave anything <laughs> and that's but, a good news <laughs> but you said the meditation is the only process so uh, at the moment you we can say that a lot of people have problem of finding time and all this without doing meditation is there any other way of finding peace two things here first thing is people don't have time i don't agree with that <laughs> <laughs> if you see people always have time for things that they want to do for the things that they love for the things that they know will bring good results to them people always find time to do those things it's just that we've still not realized the potential benefit or the potential impact of meditativeness so that's point number 1 point number 2 is is it possible to have peace without having any regular practice i think very difficult the other way is which is almost impossible having a very content way of life now that's almost impossible in today's world when there's so much social media all around maybe this talk is going to be on social media yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but when there's so much distractions all around people are not content there's a constant fomo you know fear of missing out if your friend is doing that you also want to do that yeah unless you find this contentment you cannot attain peace now how do you find this contentment is the question and i think to to find this contentment which will then bring you to peace meditative business is the only process how else will you do that and what is meditation i think our next yeah. discussion should yeah. be what is meditation yeah. Yeah. to simply put yoga meditation is spending time with your own self today what happens we are always outward moving a call comes you talking to your business partner a call comes you talking to your you know life partner a calls come you talking to your stakeholders etc in the entire 24 hours do you ever spend any time in a pause with your own self when you say let me sit close my eyes close my eyes and talk to myself see what's going on within me huh? reflect back on what do i want in life reflect back on the events of the day are we doing that no that's really is meditativeness 
when you start to spend some time every day with your own self alone that's the building or the start of meditativeness and as you will start to do that more and more you'll find more and more peace because you'll find more and more clarity about who you are you'll find more and more clarity about what do you want from this life you'll find more and more clarity about what kind of life you lead in the future what are your aspirations and this clarity will give you a certain peacefulness but we are not taking the pause these days we're running too fast we are running too fast to achieve things too quickly yeah we are being alone yeah. but the thing is we are still engaged with uh, <laughs> social media we are alone with a lot of engagement yeah <laughs> now this aloneness is without any engagement it's like if i ask our audience do you ever spend time with your cup of tea or with your cup of coffee all by yourself with no engagement all around just enjoying this cup of tea because if you start to do that enjoy 10 minutes this cup of tea they are it will open so many dimensions of understanding within you because there is a certain silence which we all have and that silence has a lot of answers what we are doing in the world we are trying to find answers and peace outside but the answers and peace are all there inside look at some of the life stories of great scientist they were struggling to solve a problem they could not solve that then they just left it went to sleep and 4 o'clock in the morning they just woke up and the solution came because they had left all the stress and anxiety to solving the problem aside they just in their utter relaxation they just went to sleep saying that if it comes if it comes in that peacefulness answer comes that's the magic it's quite magical actually uh science says that anger the depression or the anxiety that we have it's all the results of hormones the spiritual thing also says that hormones are the biological response or bi- biological activation of stress yeah so in your body if i have to create stress a certain hormones need to be released but what is working behind the hormone is the question behind the hormone is your thought so for example in this particular moment if somehow we create very peaceful thoughts suddenly your body will start to release a lot of serotonin happy hormone yeah so hormone is the biological process but your state of mind is the process behind the hormones which actually activates the hormone and then your body experiences peace or happiness or whatever yeah so thought is behind the hormones so the thoughts thoughts and control the, that hormones exactly so what happens when we do meditation or any spiritual practice we try to work with our mind we try to become owner of the mind we try to become the masters of the mind so that my thoughts are in my control see today the problem with the world is or most of the people their thoughts are not in their control So for example if i ask our audience right now that for next 10 seconds don't think about the blue monkey close your eyes for next 10 minutes 10 seconds don't think about the blue monkey now i can guarantee you after 10 seconds when they open their eyes everybody would be thinking about the blue monkey just because our thoughts are not in our control when you do any spiritual practice you try to bring these thoughts in your control so that you can guide the body to release the hormones that you want to be released so you're saying that uh, a person who can control your mind correct can be at peace Absolutely. does that mean that uh, even a criminal if he can control his mind can have peace a good person who cannot control his mind can have peace absolutely absolutely it all is the matter of the mind in fact uh next month onwards we are going to run a program with uh, prisoners in delhi there's a large prison in india called tihar jail which is in delhi we're going to run a meditative experiment with these prisoners to prove that no matter what you've done in life 
no matter if the society has termed you as bad people if you start to practice certain meditations you will start to experience peacefulness and then that peacefulness will bring better thoughts in you will bring better thoughts in you we're going to run that scientific experiment soon will peace determine your destiny to a large extent yes to a large extent yes i'll give you an example let's say this person a who's established in peace and this person a is going on a highway and uh, a road rage case happens this person a will be very peaceful no road rage will happen person b who's not peaceful who's very stressful anxious and and aggressive and a road road rage case happens this person will actually do something ultra bad that he or she could be behind bars so that their, their destinies in both it's the same situations but their destinies are going to be very different okay sri anish there are a lot of guru ji's or spiritual leaders out there how are you different from them <laughs> <laughs> again two things on this one is is there a need to be different why should one be different because if i want to be different then i'm putting stress in my mind oh what should i do to be different <laughs> and you lose your peace <laughs> <laughs> and you lose your peace <laughs> so first question is why there is a need to be different there's need to be good there need to be calm there's need to be peaceful there's need to be happy and there's need to be thinking about world peace and betterment of humanity that's the need if every spiritual teacher master guru starts to think about that and establish in that then there's no we're not in competition you see i left the entire corporate world to come out of the competition no <laughs> now you're saying why how are you different why aren't you competing <laughs> on a lighter side on a lighter side no there is no competition i think all the need to be different has gone away number one number two yet i'm different uh in the same breath i would say because uh, i'm guided to speak the truth and truth alone and not project anything that i'm not a uh, lot of spiritual people do that a lot of spiritual people don't do that if you want to take that as a differentiator i don't know <laughs> but there is no need to be different there is just no need to be different so at the moment the world is not at peace right so what do you think the leaders should have in order to create a peaceful world you can only create that which you have you can only give that to the world what you have if you don't have 2000 dollars you cannot give 10 dollars to somebody yeah you need to have those dollars first for the world leaders to create a peaceful world which is a need right now the world leaders first of all themselves need to realize understand the value of peace and imbibe peace individually if they don't imbibe it they can't create policies which will create world peace it comes from the individual alone I can't create a great policy for the world peace if I'm not at peace within myself. So I think that's the first thing. And I think that's the work which is needed. If you uh if somebody helps me, I would like to bring all the world leaders in one meditation class or room and give them a certain process of meditation so that slowly they start to experience this deep happy peace within themselves. And then only they should go to the parliament and create policies. not before that it should be mandatory actually for every politician to practice meditation but meditation is uh, somehow perceived as related to hinduism okay. but the world leaders are not all of them are hindus so two things again here one uh, meditation does not belong to hindu religion however it's a fact that india has been the longest living civilization on earth and india became the seat of spiritual wisdom from last 10000 15000 years and india contributed a lot of meditative uh practices and meditative techniques to the whole globe to the whole world but having said that it does not just belong to hindus or india it belongs to the entire humanity so that's that's point number 1 point number 2 earlier in the discussion i did say that what is meditation it's a process of spending some 
quality time with your own self so that you know who you are you know what you want you know what is right and what is not right for you and for the larger ecosystem now if you look at that as a process of meditation do you think it's any it belongs to any particular religion spending time with yourself does it belong to any religion or any caste any creed no it belongs to the whole humanity but yes india did a lot of work on this and shared a lot of techniques with the world so that's how i would i would respond to this question hence for the world leaders or any religion in the world i don't think it should be a show stopper so to say that this technique is coming from the land of india it should not be okay thank you sri anish for giving us the clarity on peace and uh, wish you all the best thank you tyaga may the world be full of peace yeah sure may our lives be full of peace thank you thank you thank, thank you, you.